So to start off with, we're gonna draw out our design. And I've provided the traceable for this, but you could also pause the video and draw out the design with me. It's fairly simple. And I'm using a General's Charcoal pencil <clears throat> to do this just, just so that you can see the design. You could draw it out in pencil if you wanted to. And I painted my base coat is the Flat Black by Apple Barrel. It's 21148 Black. It doesn't say it's a flat black, but it is, and I really love it for a base coat. So now I'm doing the body segments. And you can do either the segments like I'm doing, or you could do um, circles, ovals, teardrops. I have on my YouTube Dragonfly video, they were teardrops for the body. You can do any of those, whatever you want to do. So now I'm doing like, I think this is called a cone flower. <clears throat> the, the center is shaped kind of like a gumdrop and then do long teardrop shapes for the petals. And for the the wing design, I'm just following the bottom section of the wing, the same, the same design. So it's going to follow kind of what the bottom of the wing does. And then these little half circles. And two more half circles. Now I'm going to outline the whole design in black and I'm using the airbrush paint black that I normally use. Which for some reason has just completely escaped my mind what it is. Oh gosh. Createx Black. I knew it would come to me eventually. It's very early in the morning here. It's like 4 o'clock in the morning. So it's the Createx Black that I normally use to outline my designs. <clears throat> and I like to use this, even though you're, you're outlining black on black, because this is a flat black for the base, this Createx, which has a little bit more of a shine and is a true black, stands out even on the black background. So now that I've outlined the whole design, I'm going to paint the background a hologram. It's uh, Extreme Glitter by Folk Art, and it's the hologram color. So I'm going to do the whole background. And it takes a couple of layers just to fill everything in. 
and it looks real milky when you first put it on, but it does dry clear. And it gives it kind of a black, uh, not a black, I'm sorry, a green uh, color when it's all dry. But if you wanted to, you could paint this any color you wanted to. You could do um, like a purple would be pretty, a purple glitter, which the uh, Folk Art Extreme Glitter brand comes in a bunch of different colors. So if you didn't want to use hologram, you could use one of those other colors. And I'm not going over my design because I don't want to paint over this glitter. So I'm. that's the reason why I outlined everything and drew in my design first. And I'm putting the background in around the design. And now that the parts that are dry, I can tell when there's like a, a thin spot of the glitter. I go over that again uh, to make sure that all my glitter pattern is kind of solid. So now I'm doing the wings and I'm doing those in, it's the same thing, it's the Extreme Glitter by Folk Art, but it's the champagne color. And eventually, I was going around the design, around the black, and trying to fill in the segments. Then I decided just to paint the whole wing. It just makes it easier. I just painted the whole wing, the champagne color, and I'll draw the black lines back over it. Now, because the glitter, the, the binder of the glitter dries clear, I needed to erase my pencil marks. And again, I'm doing a couple of coats to make sure that I don't have big gaps in the glitter. And we'll let that dry and then move on to the body segments. So I'm using a sponge technique for this. For those that are find the glazing technique hard to do, I was trying this technique with a, this is a makeup applicator that I got off of Amazon. You can get like 200 of them for less than $10. And I'm using a phthalo blue and I think it's like an aqua color. Let's see. It is a bright aqua green. So I was trying to find another technique um, to use to do blending, blending color. This took me a little longer than it would if I had just done a glazing technique. But... I'm also not real familiar with using this sponge. I did like the way it worked. Um, I just need to do more practice to get it to where I can do it quickly. I got faster as I moved down the body. What I want is the aqua green to be on the left hand side and the phthalo blue, the darker blue, to be on the right hand side. And the key really is to put the dark blue down and then just get just a dot of the light blue, the aqua, 
and start and I'm I'm not spreading it, I'm kind of pouncing on it. I'm dabbing it. But I kept picking up too much paint and so I had to keep going back and forth. So for the the lighter color, you just need a dab because really you just want that the corner to be bright aqua green and then you want it to quickly fade into the blue. And you don't have to worry about getting out of the lines or anything because we're going to go back over and re-outline any areas where we got out of line. So I'm showing you this in real time and then for the rest of the body I'm going to speed it up. So that's kind of the look we're going for. So now we're going to speed it up and again I paint the whole thing blue and then I take just a dab, see that was just a dab of that aqua color and I'm just hitting that upper left corner and I'm also flipping the applicator over and I'm putting the aqua on one side and the phthalo blue on the other side. And I'm using a dabbing motion. even that was a little bit too much paint. I can make it work, but you really need just very little of the aqua or the lighter color, whatever color combination you go with. The lighter color, you just need a, a small dab. Like that was, that was really close to perfect there. And you need to work quickly. This is a wet on wet technique. This isn't going to work as well. If the paint, uh, if the dark color dries. Now I'm just hitting that far left corner just to brighten up that corner. Now I'm going in and just reblending. So again, there was a little bit of a learning curve for me, but I felt like by the by the end of it, I had kind of got it figured out. So now I'm still using, just because I had it in my hand, I could have done this with a paintbrush. It probably would have been easier, but because I already had these applicators out, I just was using the applicators, just trying to kind of figure out what they will and won't do. So I'm painting in the petals of the cornflowers and you see it if you stroke up and down with these it takes a lot of the paint off so it really works better in a in a dabbing motion and it's harder for me to stay within the lines so there'll be a lot more cleanup with this method. So now I'm going to my paintbrush because I'm, I'm just more comfortable with it.
We just want a solid pink color here. Or whatever color you choose. You know, you can choose whatever colors. So now I'm going to take some magenta and my little sponge applicator. And what I want to do is make the look, leaves look like they're kind of curling up on the edges. So I'm only doing the center section of each petal. It's kind of hard to tell because of the way the rock rounds is rounded. I guess I had to let that layer dry and then paint over it again. But now that I've dabbed it, now I'm just going back over it with the paintbrush because, again, I can, I'm can i faster with a paintbrush. But I'm only doing the center section. I'm leaving a pink ring around the whole petal. And now I'm taking some burnt sienna. We're going to work on the center section of the cone flower. Now I'm bringing that brown down in between the petals. Where there's black showing, I'm just kind of pulling that brown down in between those petals. We just want a solid color here, as the base color. And then I'm going to mix a little bit of white in with the brown just to lighten it up a, a tad. And now I'm just kind of randomly dotting and overlapping dots the left hand side, kind of upper left hand side. And that's just going to be the highlight on the, the center of the flower. So I'm going to do this color and then I'm going to add a little bit more white and get just a, another slightly lighter color and do that again right up in that upper left hand corner. So here's the slightly lighter color. And I don't need to take this, this one down as far. But again, these are overlapping dots. And you could use a dotting tool if you wanted to. I'm just using a round paintbrush. So now I've grabbed my Createx Black Outliner, the paint that I use for outlining. And I'm going to redraw in my design, or paint in my design. And I'm letting my lines stay kind of thick. Now, I want them to be really visible, so I'm making them thicker than I usually do when I'm outlining.
And then we're just going to outline the whole design. So now I'm going to take some titanium white and I'm going to, I'm doing dots and dashes here, but I am going to end up turning them into backwards L's. There we go, the backwards L. Just in that bottom right corner and then I'm going to do a dot on the top left corner. And that'll give the illusion of them looking kind of wet. And then I'm doing little comma strokes at the base of the petals, that's just to add a little bit of interest. And I'm bringing that little comma shape up a little bit, just on the left hand side. So now I've watered down my white just a little bit, and I'm going in and I'm putting in obviously a, a strip of paint and then rubbing it in and that's kind of frosting the petal or the petal the wings it's kind of giving it a frosted flight frosted effect it's just to give the wings some dimension because they were looking a little flat and I'm doing this predominantly on the lower part of the of the segment of the wing So now I'm taking some black and some of some brown, like a darker brown, and I'm just doing the bottom right corner of the cornflower center. And then I'm going to lighten up the center, uh, do an even brighter highlight on the left hand, top left hand corner. This is just. <clears throat> just to give it a little bit more dimension because uh, acrylic paints always dry darker than what you put them on so sometimes you have to go back and tweak your highlights just to be sure now here's the finished product I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one